This is AFTV VIP, the official web app with members only content, has no ads and a live in game match center. The bias predictor, it has daily polls and the AFTV 11 selector. Just one click away. Yes, my people. Hello and welcome to AFTV's daily news show with myself, Cecil G. And unfortunately, I would say my guy James B, but he's not here um, with me today. So it's just me and I have a special guest I will introduce in a second. But first, I'm just going to obviously bring up what we spoke about this morning, the new top. I don't know if you guys seen this new warm-up top that got delivered today. I think I recommend it highly. Go get it. It's fresh. We've got a lot to talk about today. Obviously, England are playing um, at eight o'clock. So I'm going to try and get this live in, get you, get you some fresh content and we can discuss some. Now, my guest, a man um, who's a great presenter, He's, I call him the brands man, always got a nice little brands deal, good guy, good friend of mine as well. We go way back, which we're going to go into as well. My good friend, Joel Bayer from Cheeky Sport. Yes, Joel, you good? I'm going on, Cecil. Hold on, first of all, yeah, I just want to say, well done. I've been watching a few of the stuff with you and Robbie on there. I think you lot are doing an amazing job. What people don't understand is how hard you work. You've always worked hard, even when you was playing at Cheeky Sport FC, even at AFTV. You're just yep. a hard, hard worker, man. You put in a lot of graft. So please, everyone watching, make sure you support Cecil. I see someone trying to be funny, some Yash guy like Cecil out. We're not having none of that around here because he worked so hard just to get this show going. So thank you yeah. for having me on, man. Shout out to Robbie as well. Yeah, big up. Listen, I appreciate that massively. Yeah, wicked. Cool. So let's get into, obviously, how we know each other. Obviously, you've worked a lot. You've worked for AFCB before. You've worked at the club before. But... Me and you, we, we kind of went back before I even started at AFTV. So I'm going to, yeah. let me ask you a question. Yeah. Where did we first, where did we first meet? Let's uh, tell we, the uh, we f Wait, hold on. I want to give a massive shout out to the audiences that are here. You lot, we love you, bro. You know, big shout out to Omar, Yar official. Do you know what I mean? Big shout out to Preston. You know, he's showing you some love. Big shout out to Alvin Pandy. Do you know what I mean? Big yeah, shout big out to, yeah, to you guys inside, man. Ketamine HD. We love you lot, man. But yeah, how I met you, um, I think it must have been at one of these shows. We must have been hosting, um, doing some sort of cheeky sport hosting um, at one of these shows, probably Nike shows. Like that. And you was Marcus Rashford's stunt double. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Marcus Rashford, like, when Rashford was fresh out, you know, I'm cool. coming from like, they just Wait. picked you. Maybe it's the back of your head because I didn't see it from the front. It must have been because of the back of your head. So, yeah. Shout out to Mizzy Mitch as well in the building. Sick name. Yeah, yeah I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, and then we can hear it. Just, just to make that clear to everyone, I'm just going to just paint a picture. So, obviously, if you guys don't know, I body double for Marcus Rashford and it was it was a shoot that I was doing for Nike. And um, Joel was there and we met at a strike night, which was a massive event. And um, yeah, Joel was there, hit me up, we just spoke, we got on really well, sort of details and was like, yeah, man, I'll have to see you soon. And because yeah. we just involved in the industry and then from there, it kind of, it just kept growing. Um, I obviously met you when you set up your Cheeky Sport FC YouTube team. And then, yeah, I got involved in that. Kicked we a few. Not, don't just say that. We were the best team out there. Don't just say that. We used to take things seriously. We could win a game and it felt like a loss because the standards were high, cuz. We, we yeah. played like 10, 12 games. We only lost one game ever. And that was the first game we ever played. The rest of them, we won every single game. Like, no doubt. Like, be beating Robbie's team inside out. You know them ones there? Like, Laurie's like, we want a rematch. I'm like, yeah, bro, you can bring a rematch. I'm still waiting for him, bro. He's, you know, oh, it's been locked down. Nah, bro, bring it, bro, bring it. We'll set up a secret match. You get me? But yeah, exactly, man. exactly that. So that was that was it, man. When I was playing for Chief Sport, I'm going to be humble with, with my how I was playing, but yeah, Joe kind of said it. We we broke yeah, up a lot. Bad boy striker, do you know what I mean? Um, I was always a little bit strong on Cecil because his ability is just mad. There, do you know what I mean? Defenses just couldn't deal with him at all. You know they couldn't deal with him at all. And yes, Yashmina says FA Cup champions. Lots of show off. Listen, it says FA Cup champions of the world. That's what you can't see because the screen cut off. FA Cup champions of the world. Tell Chelsea fans to shut up their mouth, Rube. Yeah. <laughs> Like the energy is the energy is lively yeah, tonight. Bro. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Let's um 
let's get into it. Let's get into it. Because obviously, at, at, um, I was talking about at Strike Night, uh, there, was lots, there was a lot of big people there. Aubameyang was one of them. Now, I have I read this this uh, headline this week and I was like, boy, is this what Tony Cruz is going to do? Talk, talk about how he's going to talk to my captain? Is that how he's talking about my captain? I was thinking, nah. So firstly, just to make everyone clear, let me just explain to you what was said, just to make it very clear and obvious. So this is what was said. It was kind of a spat over, he had an interview actually, and he said, um, basically he was talking about dance routines. So he goes, if they're, if they're rehearsed dances or, chore or choreography, I find it very silly. That's what he first said. Then he said, even worse, if there's any objects hidden in their socks. So that's what he then went on to say. He then mentioned Aubameyang saying, Aubameyang once celebrated and took out a mask. That is where it ends from, with me. Then he says, I don't think that's a good role model either. What nonsense. Now, do you know what? I'm going to hold back. Joel, Joel tell us, what do, what's your thoughts on that? What, what do you, what's your opinion? Well, he's obviously misinformed. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's obviously, just an education thing. And the reason why I say that, it's even changed my mood, as you can tell. Um, mm. You know, gr growing up, um, I just remember not having too many heroes or people to look to. Do you know where I'm coming from? And I think all it is is a Bamiyang showing to his young children, young child, and, you know, the fact that, wow, these are heroes that he can identify with. Um, I remember when I was younger, you know, looking at cartoons and stuff involving Vikings and stuff like that, I never took it to offence. Do you know what I mean? Like, I understood that that was a culture, you know, that was a Icelandic, excuse me if I'm wrong, but type culture. And, uh, yeah, you just see it as it is, you know. Like, I don't I don't take it anyway. I think when, um, what's that striker that used to score and pull out the little mask? It looked like a Zorro mask. I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I didn't look at that and go, oh, what's he doing? Is that something to do with Spanish culture? I don't look at things like that. Do you know what I mean? There's loads of different people that are allowed to enjoy their, their, um, their, um, you know, whatever it is, their culture. They're not, you're not hurting anyone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, big Great. shout out to the Bulgarian fans that I saw inside the chat. Big shout out to Gunners Malaya. Yeah, that's me commenting on the IG post. True Gunner out here. You get me? So, yeah, yeah. that's how I see it, man. That's how I see yeah. it. Yeah, no, I was quite like taken back. I feel like Cruz needs to take a Bamiang, he needs to take um, yeah, Bamiang's name out of his mouth, in my opinion. Obviously, we know Cruz is a baller. We're very aware of that. I see a lot of comments saying Cruz, baller, baller. He's got talent. He's definitely a good player. But yeah, yeah. I mean, if players want to express themselves when they score, I don't think there should be a problem with that. And that, I want to ask you that as well, um, Joel. Like, what's your opinion on obviously when you score? I get it. Now, there's no fans at the moment. So people having a reserve celebration, maybe just a fist in the air and all that. But the more extravagant celebrations, like what's your opinion? So, like a Bamiyang's yeah, front, as long as you're playing well, you can all right. do it. All right. Yeah. Why, the reason why a Bamiyang, I don't mind him having a multi colored wrapped up Lamborghini is because if you take his Arsenal career as an entirety, he has, you know, what I mean, it doesn't get on my nerves. Not saying mm. if it got on my nerves, it would be wrong, but I'm just saying you, we kind of have a lot of. We have love and understanding for people who are playing well. If you want to express yourself, if you're playing dead, you've been crap, you've been the worst player, and then you score, and then you want to start, you know what I mean? Like, mm. shut up, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to see, you know what I'm like, you know, I'm all fun and game. When it comes to playing, don't show me stupidness when you ain't even given 100. I don't want to see that, bro. Do you know what I'm coming from? That? And I was like that as a captain playing, I was like that everywhere, even. I'll throw it in there, bare name dropping. I used to play for Mill as well. Even when man was there, man wanted to, like, nah. It was focus, focus, focus all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Obviously, if someone's exceptionally well, then big man, do what you're going to do. But, you know, there's a time and a place for everything is what I'm saying. Okay, so on that note, you're, so basically what Joel's saying there is, if you're, if you're doing the goods on the pitch and you're producing the goals or doing your job, then celebrate how you want. It's now really Exactly. Now I'm going to bring up a video <laughs> of someone who we could say has outlandish celebrations. Does his does he used to do his thing? Does his um fancy dancing, shall I say? But there's not really much going on with him at the moment. I'm just going to play this video. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you a little sign. Oh! 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 Oh
then when you can shake someone's hand and didn't have to worry about Corona. Yeah. Oh, that was days, bro. But that was funny. <laughs> someone actually said in the comments, someone was like, back then, Jesse was a problem still. Listen, man weren't complaining when Jesse was um, scoring for England in the World Cup. Like, I remember mm. being there in Russia when he would score, like, you know what I mean? Top bins it and that, like. So, yeah, man, like, I think if you're playing well, you know, what I did that day, Arsenal fans, I went out there to get revenge, innit? Because the yeah, week before, he came on. He came to our stadium and did the moonwalk thing, cuz, like, Jesse is a real cool brother, innit? Like, like, he's a real nice guy. He's opened the doors to his home for us to do some work and stuff like that. So, you know, like, I banter players all day long and we're mad cheeky, but I also mm -hmm. got respect for people, you know what I mean? And yeah, back, especially then, he. He deserved to dance how he wanted to dance, in it? So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Listen, Joe, I fully agree. I think that video, that every time I watch it, it kills me, though. Like, I don't love the video. It felt like Moonwalker, boy. That is that is insane. I edited that myself, by the way, just letting you know. I oh, respect for that. I was respect for that. So, obviously, that is, um again, that's players express themselves. And if, in my, listen, I am fully with the, play the players being able to express themselves. I even set up my own company saying that players need to do our uh, work with young footballers and tell them they need to do more things alongside football because you can't get caught up in the football world and do have football, football, football. is dangerous for the mental and it affects your play in the long run. Um, when I was playing, I got told you need to be a 24-7 footballer, 24-hour footballer, Ronaldo does it, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, where do you, where do you get the release? Where do you... Like, how do you enjoy the sport when you're just literally honing on it all, the, honing in on it all the time? So, I'm happy for players to do do other stuff like the likes of um, Bellerin, like basketball, like basketball. When they, when you know, that's the sport where people express themselves. American football, uh, yeah. they're not any less. They're not. It doesn't make them less of an uh, of an athlete. Do you know what I'm no. coming from? I think the culture is very different in the UK compared to in the US, and you know that's what it is. People are not used to it. We're more used to it now. But, you know what I mean, before, if you see someone with a, a Pogba with a haircut, it's front page and he's disgracing the game and it's rubbish, bruv. Like, you know what I mean? If I want, if I, well, I went Turkey, you know what I mean? Man did the thing. What, does that mean <laughs> that man's a disgrace? You know what I mean? Hey, no. me for the plug, though, still, you get me? But, yeah, man, come on, bro. No, for real. That's the real reason why I'm here. Come on, man. That's not, yeah. that's not no, I agree, bro. Like they have to be able to. They can't just be robots to the game. And if anything, the game's getting more and more wooden as as the days go on. Like the VAR, oh, diving, yeah. the they need somewhere to just have a bit of expression and release themselves. So when Cruz is talking about um, Bamiang or pulling out masks for celebrations, I find that um, I find it annoying that he said that. And obviously, we, we're going to go touch back to it. He Bamiang then replied on Twitter. He um, he first questioned, was it Tony Cruz that actually said this? That's what he was just saying. Right, did you really say this? Then he found out the source was reliable and it was him. And then his response to it was, um, I wish you have kids one day and make them happy like, uh, like this junior school pupil. So I don't know if you, obviously there was a cartoon attached to that, a cartoon drawing attached to that tweet um, from Aubameyang with Aubameyang in a superhero cape and of him, yeah, of him celebrating. So... The main thing I'm going to say is Cruz does have kids. That um, He does have kids to that. But that is what Aubameyang was doing that celebration for, the mass um, of, of would I, would, I, would I be offended if someone mm -hmm. celebrated and they had a Superman, some sort of Superman cape or something like that? Or, you know, Dwight Howard, um, you know, Lakers player, he used to put a Superman cape in their, you know, dunk contest and whatever. It's, look, man, like I wouldn't be offended if I saw Superman. I wouldn't be offended if I saw Batman. I wouldn't be offended if I saw something from the Avengers. I wouldn't be offended if I saw, do you know what I mean? Black Panther. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, let's not make it what it doesn't need to be. You know, right. glad that there's different types of heroes, different shapes, sizes, colors. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and that's it. That's all I've got to say on that. Simple. That's cool. Done. Wicked. So there you go. That's it. And my opinion, same. I just feel like, listen, let them express themselves. He said it's for his kids. We know Aubameyang is a very outlandish character. He's always smiling. He's happy. He has his cars, um, customised cars in bright, bright colours. And he's always showing himself off. So that's his character. And I think even the, the, the Black Panther thing to Chadwick Boseman as well, players are doing that after as well. So it's, it's not a bad thing to get a mask out. I feel like Tony Cruz... 
I think yeah. I think we're gonna we'll let we'll let that wait, one go. Wait, wait, no. wait, 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 wait. Before you go on to the next topic, man out here calling you Saliba. Oh my days. I was like, why are they writing free him? What's going on? Is he in jail? Um, and I looked, no. I looked at that man's face. I was like, oh my days. They're talking about you, Cecil. I know, oh. they listen. It's, it's been, it's been. A, I need to it's been a free him t shirt. Have you got a pen? Man can write free. Oh <laughs> my days. Free him. It's a living, it's a living. I get Saliba, I get Edda Melito, I get I get it all, bro. Like it's it's been it's been a bit of a mad Saliba, you know. Flight text flight called you Cecil Sim. Oh my days. Carry on, my bro. Sorry. I was gonna see this. Cecil Football 20. I'm not on this on that one. I was on two football managers, uh 2000 site, but back in the day. Um was yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I think it's 2000 and Maybe fourteen and fifteen or thirteen and fourteen, one of the two. But yeah, back yeah, in the day. So, yeah, that trained himself up twenty <laughs> years of <laughs> <his> career, bro. <laughs> Got them stats up mad high. <laughs> Got a big up. Had a manager in that. Living exactly. Up. Exactly. All right. Cool. So we're gonna move on to someone who was well, the it's the youngest, the younger generation. I'm gonna say the younger generation of Arsenal. We're gonna talk about that. Obviously, we we spoke about. Um, the Tony Cruz comment. I don't feel like a lot of the young players are getting involved in any of that, which is good. They're just keeping professional. And one player that I'm very, very impressed with, Joel, like the guy, I'm his, one of his biggest fanboys, um, is Bayaka Saka. So, Saka, I know you wanted to talk about, I know you're, you're happy. Your video recently just come out with you at Arsenal, them doing a the nerf shooting. So, yeah, yeah talk to yeah. us on, on Saka. What's your thoughts? Because Listen, I found out just now he's in the starting eleven, which I'll go through once um, Joel's got to leave. Um, can't stay for the whole life, but once he leaves, we'll go through the whole starting lineup. But yeah, talk to us, Saka. Your opinion, bro? He's been incredible. He's been incredible. I like the fact that he he um, he keeps going. You can see that his game has improved because it wasn't just last year that he was playing. He was playing at the end of the season, the year before last. Do you know what I mean? I remember him playing at Old Trafford. Um, and yeah, I, I, I thought he was brilliant even back then. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but the fact is, you can see he's more brave. He's obviously, he's a little guy. When I say little guy, he's he's growing a little bit. You can tell he's stronger. When I stood mm. next to him, I can see that he's been doing his gym work and stuff like that. Yeah, and what's he like in person? What's he like in person? Obviously, you met him. Real, 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 real. Do you know what? Yeah, he's just like a proper, he's a, a kid. When I say a kid, he's like a kid. He's like a cool kid that um he's very humble like i think he forgets who he is in that mm. kind of he doesn't have that ar- that that bad arrogance like what are you talking about now? what are you talking about like he's very like let's do this let's have a bit of fun do you know what i mean really polite really everybody at the club really likes him uh he's mad funny like he's just focused on being funny he's not focused on things he shouldn't be focused on and someone like Mikel Arteta and the staff you can tell that they noticed this very quickly um, he's not there talking about other people, making other people feel small. Uh, he's just mad funny and always trying to compete with Eddie and Ketia. So, wow. um, yeah. Okay. Is that, all right. Is that the rivalry they have then? Is Eddie and Ketia and Saka then, yeah? Is that what, yeah. Is that what from, from what I see, everything is just competition. Everything between the two of them. And it's just like, it's good to see because it's like, if we were to be playing for a same team, that's how we would be like. Or if, you know, any of the guys in the chat you know, if Alex Perdios was with Rick Sanchez and they were mates, you know me, I'm always trying to shout at the random, you know. If these guys were all mates, then, you know what I mean, they would all be, you know what I mean, having a good time with each other and they should enjoy it. They're young and they're doing amazing things, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, agreed. This is a big comment. Obviously, Saka, oh, I could say Saka. And, oh, well, I just missed them. Sorry, these comments are flying and keep them coming. Saka is Mars head of Eddie, says Rick Sanchez. I mean... I agree from that personally, but yeah, they, 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 they're, they're different stages. I think Saka's, I think he's a very mature player. I actually, I think he's incredible in the way he plays. And I don't did sleep a lot on Eddie, though. Don't sleep on Eddie. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. it's, 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 you see, what I find funny is development is funny, Cecil. Like, um, mm. I, I look at there's players that have just come out of nowhere. If you look at Dominic Calvert Lewin, like, look, man, I remember I saw clips where. I, I saw him three years ago. Three years ago, I remember going to the Liverpool derby, uh, met him post-match, was doing some prank stuff. and and then. But who would have known? He was not... I could not have put money down to say he was going to be the player he is today. 
So mm. as far as we're concerned, we got some good youngsters in it, and we just have yeah. to support them, and and uh, and hopefully they'll keep developing as well. Simple as that. Agreed. Yeah, support the support that you've coming through. Like I was, I was saying there is um. Saka's yeah maturity in his play is incredible. I was doing some stat crunching before this, and I was just like, um, the Sheffield game he scored. Obviously, he was like the top um, top got top in shots. His stats so were the highest amount of shots in that game. In the City game, I think he had the, the most amount of blocks. Like both, I think both going forward and defending, Saka is 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 um, he's second to none. I really am impressed with what I've been seeing recently. I want to see more of him. There's only there's only one debate obviously I keep having with people is. What's his weakness and what does he what's what does he lack? And I I actually generally believe it is the it's the clinical side, but we can't rush him for that because he's 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 still young. He does a defensive duty. He's not really playing too high up the pitch, but he does create a lot clinical, of chances. Clinical. I know he scored headers, but clinical and maybe the head and ability. I mean, I don't expect that to be fantastic because of his yeah. height. You know what I mean, but I probably say yeah, he's he's still learning his game. The thing is, when I see a lot of these players, you can see them learning every game. You know, there's yeah. some players, yeah, they're either having a good game or a bad game, but you know that, look, they're there, you know what I mean? They play the game and that's what it is, what it is. But when you see those youngsters, like Kieran Tierney, I can see him improving. I can yeah. see that he's getting stronger and his decision-making is getting better. And you can just see it in, in, in most games. And obviously we can see it when players don't play well. But yeah, that's what I like about the boys, man. I'm, I'm, I'm loving the progress. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems like it's on the right path. Um, obviously, we had a little bit of a dip, but I feel after this international break, hopefully Arteta will get um, the players huddled around together and, and sort out some of the problems going forward. Uh, I think it was, a, it was it was a big shock, obviously, the result against Aston Villa, but I think at times it, it might have been, it may not needed, but it, it's going to, it's, we're going to take a lot from it, in my opinion. I don't know. I don't know your thoughts on the Aston Villa game. If you want to briefly touch on it at all. Yeah, it was mad disappointing, bruv. I was about to start, you know, watching a new sport, bruv. I was about to put on the, the basketball thing and <laughs> practice my freeze, you know what I mean? So, yeah, look, we have to bounce back. I'm not going to act like it wasn't a bad result. I think that was a bad result, bad performance, bad everything, you know what I mean? We're not going to sugarcoat it. It is what it is. But, you know, we have to bounce back really quickly. And I think it's a lesson. It's a lesson for us. You can go to Old Trafford and do really well. You know, smack it up, have a, a block party, you know what I mean? In that centre mid centre midfield, you can do all of that. If you're gonna mess it up next week, then there was almost no point in it. You might as yeah. well, do you know what I mean? So and I guess that's experience as well. Um, you know, you can't take teams lightly in this Premier League, especially when you're playing against Aston Villa. Like, seriously, man. Even before this, even before this match, Jack Grealish for me, um, you're maybe player of the se player of the season so far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ross Barkley, yeah. that man on some next thing. Yeah. So you can't go there thinking it's going to be calm. Ollie Watkins, you saw what he did against Liverpool. So I just yeah. feel like you know you can't afford to start off slow. You can't afford to, you know what I mean? Like we're nah. yeah, we we started off very slow. Listen, we they scored in the first forty two minutes, forty two seconds. It's like, and we thought I thought that was going to be a warning. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and we and the way you have to see it as players, and it's easier said than done, etc. But this has to be done as a team, right? Mm. The mentality you have to go in there and and be like, okay, cool. You know what I mean? We the next team we play has to get officially annihilated. No rubbish, no rubbish from no one. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And shout yeah. out to Mackenzie Edwards, student. Yes, this is a, a, AFTV. No, Robbie ain't lost bear weight. Nah. <laughs> Still the henchman that he's the big rubber. <laughs> still him. That's <laughs> our new guy over here, and myself as a guest. Big up everyone in the comments. Too much love as usual. You get me? Yeah, thank you. In in the, in the second, we're just gonna we're gonna take some comments. Well, we're gonna take comments now. Actually, let's just take some take a few comments. We've got this. Oh, one. I've got this one here. Saka and Martinelli, our best our best player. I'm gonna see some of these players. Yeah. Martinelli, obviously, we're waiting for Martinelli to return from injury. In I oh, can't wait, man. I can't oh, wait for that guy to come back, man. It's such a mad year with injuries, especially with all these extra games. That's why half of Liverpool squads on the side, bruv. Do you know what I mean? When you, yeah, when you put all them club championship games and you put this game and that game and, do you know what I mean? They can't, they can't like it. It. Yeah, yeah, they're not. You really can't take it, man. It's as simple as that. Mm, exactly that. Um, we've got this one here. Mackenzie Edwards, student again. Saka's the best young player in the English Premier League. I mean, that's not that. Yeah. Be, that I believe that. I hope some believe that. I think he's been exactly. absolutely lost. He's, exactly. he's 
across. You could um, be could wing young PFA player of the year, you never know. Yeah, exactly. Still long season, still got time to go. He's got loads more to show us, I'm sure. This one here, though, from Emmanuel or what? Oh, um, says too much pressure on Saka, let him develop. Now, we're not, I mean, it's not, we're not, I don't think we're throwing too much pressure. I think we've all, everyone's kind of Emmanuel, saying, it's been, brother. Emmanuel's just trying to be the, hey, hey, he's trying to be the mutual guy. Like, Emmanuel, no one's trying to super big him up. You heard what we said. We love what the youths are doing, developments at different places. We said it all, Emmanuel. A big shout out to Mr. All still. Ooh. Ooh. Hey. Ooh. Emmanuel, ooh. Um, this yeah. one here, it's going back to the topic. Of this live is it's it's Tammy says uh, Oba's response was solid and do you know what I fully agree you know is a it was a yeah. response listen Cruz is just talking he's misinformed you know yeah. it's a misinformed um it's a misinformed not a complete answer that a question or answer that he's put out there he, you know what I mean like he, he and if that's just how he feels and he's not misinformed and he's he knows all the facts and he's educated and he still sees it that way then big man. That is you. You stay over there and do what you're doing. Don't bring your controversy to my world. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, otherwise I will bring the controversy to your world, and you ain't gonna like it when we do that. See, I, I, that's the real bad man talking in there, Joe. Yeah. That is facts, though. That is real facts. It's facts, bro. What you said there, you said yeah, facts. Just, just stick. Don't put your name. In, don't put my name in your mouth. It's all good. I'm, I'm doing my thing. Do your thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I respect it. You haven't saying payroll, Joel. Get out of here, man. You know me, uh, though. I'm sometimes careful of what I say. The paycheck. Yeah. No, I'm joking. I'm joking, man. This is AFTV. You just got to keep it 100. Keep it 100. Exactly that. I've got another comment here. I'm just going to break it down. Um, Lawrence. I'm going to say Lawrence oh, yeah, here. Robbie, Where? Robbie, Robbie's buying an island. So he needs to <laughs> check it out. You know what Robbie's like. He's going to buy an island. So he needs yeah. to check it out. Yeah, he's just got a meeting with someone. He's he's viewing a new island that he's looking to buy. You know, um, you know, you know what Robbie's like. Called the Arsenal Kingdom. He's just looking at it at the moment. It's going to have the equilibrium of the the ground share and the massive sense of the yeah. So basically, it's a big it's a big big meeting he's got today. So I have to take over for today's show. <laughs> ground share, you know, for the AFTV team. Wow, that this season's what's the what's the series called again? Um, Blood Brothers, isn't it? Blood Brothers is going to be mad, fam. Yeah. In that. Can you imagine yeah. Robbie in the dugout? <laughs> no, I'm bad at review. Like, Robbie's, Robbie's away today, but um, tomorrow I just wanted to let, inform everyone on Instagram Live. Robbie will be doing a quiz, giving away prizes. He'll be getting people on his live, answering a few questions. If you get the questions right, you get some prizes. You get to take some prizes off Robbie. There probably could be some yeah. big, big good prizes. Yeah. Robbie, yeah. yeah, man. Robbie comes with the good prizes, prizes. So make sure you guys are involved. Keep an eye on his. Keep Robbie an eye on might, him. Robbie might give away a car. You know what Robbie's <laughs> like, mad generous in that. He might give a, a, a Prius away. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, exactly. Make so. sure you, yeah, make sure you log in. He is the man. He is the man. It's going to take a few more comments. I know you've got to shoot, Joel. So we'll take a couple more comments. When it gets to half past, I'll let you shoot. And then I'm going to carry on. I'm just going to flick through. Do you think Martin? Oh, what do you think? You think Martin? Did? Yeah. He has the ability to. I think oh, it's yeah. never easy when you come back from injuries, but something that's changed my mind is that um, when you look at um, Danny Ings uh, for Southampton, I never thought he would be able to come back to the level that he has. Even uh, Harry Kane, I thought when I saw him injured last time, I thought, ah, he's done out here. But the, yeah. truth is, but the truth is, you know, doctors are really good these days. And, you know, if the recovery process, if Martellini takes his time, because it wasn't a, it was a serious injury. If he takes his time, um, with the with everything that we've got and the facilities, we're sure. I'm very very sure he can go back to the level that he was and carry on with his progression. Okay, wicked, smash that one, love that. So I'm gonna speak about this one. Brandon B says Arteta is making Eddie do the same work as Lacquer. Eddie is a young fox in the box, and currently that's his strength. Now, um, yes, I'm gonna quickly just speak on this. I do want to see. I know Joel may Joel may agree or may not. Um, might want to. I want to see more from Eddie. Um, I feel like. He's still young, still get his, still get his opportunities, but I think like what you, what um, Brandon said there, he's kind of trying to Im imitate Lacquer's role, which is dropping deep. And if I'm honest, I don't think even Lacquer's playing that um, false nine position. So I don't think Eddie, I don't think that's Eddie's strength. And I agree there. I think he should be more turning defenders, running in behind instead of and working within the box instead of coming deep and trying to bring in other players. I don't know if you've got anything to say on that, Joel, but that's that's my my yeah, take. Yeah. So. 
I mean, yeah, no, I agree with you, to be honest with you. And I also agree with Brandon as well, because I do think that he is a fox in a box and you want to see him, you know, doing that kind of Michael Owen role and just getting in there and doing what he has to do in the box. Uh, but, you know, time will tell. I, I'm interested to um, to see how he develops this season. Then I'll, have, I'll be able to really give an honest assessment, you know. So that's me. Lovely. All right, well, thank you. Um, let me just quickly pop this. Right, Joel, obviously it's, it's half past now. I don't want to keep you for too long. I know you're a busy man and I know you've got to do watch along. So I'm going to thank you so much for joining me on this live. Yeah, believe me, you know. Hey! <laughs> Now the Saliba thing, bro. Please. <laughs> Joking. Listen, is there anything you want to say to the FTV fans watching before you shoot? I'm going to stay on, guys, but anything you want to yeah, say? First of all, big shout out to Gio Galiz because he donated the money to Robbie. Now Robbie's going to get a new kitchen. $5,000, yeah. yeah. But you got to see $5. I see $5,000, a new kitchen. He's going to get you a new kitchen, Cecil. So, so I'm <laughs> telling you, bro. Just ask him. Um well, yeah, now nah, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Joel Bale One. Um, always updating, you know, you know, um, yeah, follow and make sure you keep following the journey. Um, I'm gonna try to keep you guys entertained as well all day long. Massive shout out to you, AFTV crew, and I look forward to seeing you soon and hosting the big debate show. Yes. Cecil, good luck, man. Lots of love for you, Robbie and the crew, Tao, uh, everyone who works hard, Pippa, Charlene, you know, the whole of the AFTV cast crew that I watch weekly. I'll see you yeah. soon. Big up. Thank you very much, Joel. Thank you. Have a good have a good evening. Okay, right. So, Gio, I'm just gonna get into this one real quick. Thank you. Obviously, that was Joel from Cheeky Sport. If you guys don't know, you come and join me today. I'm just gonna get crack on now. Obviously, the, the team's out for the England game against Ireland. We'll go through that. We'll talk about the likes of Saka because I hear he's in the starting lineup, so that's gonna be good. And I won't keep you guys too long because I know we all want to be watching the game. But let me just read this comment here. Do you think that Cruz was talking the the BSG to the Bayern versus BVB. Um, rivalry, keep up the great work. What player do you Arsenal need in January? Now, that's a big question. So that might have um, spurred on his comment, the rivalry there. I think that is probably definitely one of the, one of the um, reasons he might have brought that up. I want to say thank you for giving us to let us know that we're doing a great work. We appreciate that. Me and James did a live this morning and we spoke about the January window and I don't believe Arsenal are looking to make too much business in this January window, which is actually really sad. I know that there was talk saying that they're going to wait till summer. So I would love, now this is me, if I had the biggest budget, if I could just pick a player that would fit in, I would love Renato, Renato Sanchez. Now, I know it's very unlikely, but I feel like that's the player that would fit well in the Arsenal team. He drives the defenders. He's always willing to take on people. He's very confident in his play. He plays that he can play that 10 role. That would be a player I really want. Um, after seeing also what Grealish did, did to us, <laughs> I wouldn't be too angry having uh, Jack Grealish in the squad playing the 10 role. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to keep bringing in comments. So, guys, send them in. Uh, Mohammed says, hey, Cecil, we should buy, I can never say this guy's name, but yet yeah, there in the upper coming transfer window, 22 million for the kind of players is absolute bargain. Do you rate him? I've seen a bit of him, not enough to to, um, to have a full opinion. But yes, I rate him. I mean, 22 million. I mean, that's a fair enough price, in my opinion, for a player. I think nowadays we don't need to buy these these big, ex expensive players. I spoke about this with um, James again this morning in our, in our live. And he said, if we went for Grealish or a Zaha, when they see Arsenal coming in for these players, they add like an extra O, an extra zero. They, they just boost up their prices. Like Grealish right now, I'd say he's worth about 45. 45, 50, no, 50, 50 million, about 50 million, 55 at tops. But if he sees Arsenal coming in, they're going to say 70 million. And plus, he's an English um, player as well. I don't know what it is, but these, when it comes to English players, they they throw a higher tax on and they just throw more money into it. So, um, yeah, this is a cute, this is a nice message, Uzi. Glad to see Cecil has his own show finally. This is not my show, actually. We have a live every morning. This is Robbie's, but he's not available today. So this is why you're seeing my my ugly face in this fresh new kit. Um, he's not here, but he'll be back tomorrow and he's doing a quiz. So make sure you guys tune into that. Uh, well, no, I just, I just flopped this one seat. Yeah. Okay, this is true, but players like um, Joel, Joel just said earlier, like, look at Calvert-Lewin. We never thought he'd be the player he is today. Like, they have their, they have their moments. We sort of talk about Wilfred Zaha as well. He flopped at United, technically. But look at him. I still think he brought up the Premier League. So, um yeah, it's just about this is about timing, really. Uh, what else have we got? Big up Cecil. 
Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mohammed. Appreciate that. Hey, bro, what's this one? Mackenzie again. Hey, bro, what do you think about Saar from Watford? It could maybe push Obama into the middle. What do you think? Yes, yes. Well, if I'm honest, I just want to see about um a Batman down the middle anyway. I don't really want to see um someone come in and replace it, replace him to move him to move uh a Batman into the middle. I feel like Arteta after this uh international break, I actually generally believe we might see a Batman down the central because that's all we want to see. Right, let's get into this. So I'm gonna quickly read the England the England um starting eleven. So we've got Nick Pope in goal. They're playing a we're playing a three four three. We've got Michael Keane, Harry Maguire in the middle. Of defense and Tyro Mings playing left back. We then have Reese James. Oh, these are oh, we're playing. Sorry, guys. We're playing is we're playing the wing back system that Arsenal play. If I'm honest, I'm not I'm not a massive fan of this. I, I wanna I wanna see uh Saka. He's gonna be more attacking, but I want to see him further up the field. But having this wing back role, he has to do a lot of the defensive duties, and it it does annoy me. So but it is what it is. In playing wing back on the right hand side, we've got Reese James, and then on the left hand side, we've got our boy Saka. So that's going to be good. I'm mean, excited to see what he's going to bring today. Um, I hope he has a oh, listen. I hope he has a good game. I'm looking forward to it. We've got Harry Winks in the middle, and then Mason Mount playing alongside him in the middle as well. And then the front three are Jason Sancho on the right, Jaden Sancho on the right, uh, Dominic Dominic Calvert Lewin in the central, and Jack Grealish on the left. Now, do you know what? Yeah, do you know what? That's a strong team. That's just who we're missing. Okay, we're missing maybe Sterling, but with the form that Jack Grealish is in, I think he deserves a start. Uh, I don't know how much <laughs> Southgate wants to start him after when we watch interviews of uh, Southgate talking on Grealish. He never seems like he wants to start him, but I'm glad he's actually in the starting eleven because he has been he's been sensational um, recently. So that's good. It's a strong side. Get your let me know your thoughts. Um, let me have a look. Let me have Reese James. Do you know what? Yeah, fair. Fair, I'm not going to argue this at all. I'm not, I can't pronounce that name. I'm apologies. But Reese James is fire. I think Reese James and uh, Sacco on each side. That's dangerous. That is dangerous. Let me know if you agree. That's going to be, I'm going to be interested to see the heat map of today and see which way the ball um, gets played down. Who else have we got? Anyone's thoughts on the England squad? I wish I could bring it up for you guys. Um, Harry, oh, people saying Harry Winks is doo doo. Is Saka starting? Yes, Saka is starting, which is great news for us. Um, yeah, I think Ainsley Mate Niles is on the bench. The people on the bench, we've got Dean Henderson, goalkeeper, Jordan Pickford, obviously goalkeeper. We've got Ainsley Mate Niles, our guy, um, Eric Dyer, Ben Chilwell, Declan Rice. Oh, I forgot Jude got called up. Bellingham, okay. Jude as well is on the bench. Jordan Henderson, Tammy Abraham, Phil Foden, Harry Kane. Oh, there's no stone. I think he's injured. Joe Gomez is injured. So is Aaron Connolly and so is Callum Robbins, uh, Robinson. So yeah, so that's the that's the that's the lineup for the England game. It's on at eight o'clock against Ireland. Make sure you guys are tuned in. I might even go live after you know to get people's thoughts. I'll probably go live on Instagram if I go live. So be aware of that. Uh, you know. Yeah, what do you guys talk to me if England don't win this game? What's what's your thoughts? Because obviously the next game after this is Belgium. And I feel like. It's not that we need to win it, but it'll get us, it'll be the right, um, it'll be good for us to win so we can go into the game against Belgium a bit more confident and we need to kind of win, get that game, win that game. So let me know your thoughts and give me your score results. I love score results. Give me your score predictions. My score prediction for the England game versus Ireland is going to be, I don't think Ireland are going to score, you know. I think clean sheet today and I'm going to say 3-0. Uh, no, actually, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. England never give us a form I'm talking about. That's not happening. That's not happening. Let's go 2-0. I'll say 2-0. It's normally a low-scoring game. Um, so, yeah, low-scoring game. Scorers and score predictions. I'm going to say 2-0 from Thea. Thank you. I'm going to say Saka. Saka, because I'd love Saka to score. And Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Um, but imagine if Saka scores. I'll be gassed. I'll be gassed. Oh, my God. I'll probably run out of my house. That'd be sick. Um, Oh, this is a big question, Mackenzie. Who better, Reese James or Maitland Niles? <sighs> oh, do you know what? I'm going to be honest. Right now, Reese James, I see, he plays more. I've seen more of him over Maitland Niles. I think Maitland Niles needs more time playing. Um, our technique is giving more opportunity. We got here. So here comes the score predictions England 2 1. Thank you. 
Um, S. Winning says two nil. Wink should be off. Rice should be on. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not mad at that either. Um, I think that you're right there, S. Winning. Very well said. We got four one here from Brandon. Oh, I don't know about this one. Louis Abraham says one one. Oh, I don't know about a draw. If we get a draw today, it won't be. It won't be great. Um, any more score predictions? Got four nil here. But yeah, man. Okay. So yeah, that's what. That, Oh, this is a nice one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So before 4 New England, before I head off, um, I'm going to just let you know. I want to say thank you all guys for watching and supporting. Uh, today, obviously, Robbie's not here. I've said this already. Robbie's not here, but he's going to be back tomorrow doing his live show. He's also doing a live on Instagram, doing a quiz where you can win prizes. So make sure you tune into that. Um, I'm going to be back tomorrow morning with my partner, James B. I saw a comment earlier saying, where's James? You haven't got rid of him already. James is still here. He's just going to be in tomorrow's morning show with me. And we'll probably be discussing tonight's game against Ireland and hopefully a really good performance from Saka. So thank you all for watching. And before I leave, I'm just going to play uh, a video to basically break down the new app that you guys should definitely get involved in. So. Peace. This is AFTV VIP, the official web app with members only content, has no ads and a live in-game match center. The bias predictor, it has daily polls and the AFTV 11 selector. Just one click away.